Five prospects in the state of Ohio with major interest in Ohio State. Let's talk about it. Welcome into the Voice of College Football, the Ohio State channel. Today we are talking recruiting, talking about some players in the 2026 class, and not just some players, Ohio kids in the 2026 class. And of course, we love when Ohio kids receive that interest in Ohio State, and they also have the mutual interest in Ohio State. So we're very excited to see what happens with these guys. One thing we know for sure, these guys are very interested in Ohio State, and Ohio State is very interested in them as well. Do we remind you to please do like and subscribe to the channel here we appreciate you doing that and like the video and uh, just helps us get the video around more and helps other people see the channel know all that kind of stuff you know how youtube works you've been on youtube before all right very first prospect we're going to talk about is Jaden ricketts wide receiver six foot 187 pounds out of Watkins Memorial Pataskala. Remember, he's still in his junior season right now. All of these guys are 2026 guys, so their sizes are not finalized by any means. We're looking and projecting at, okay, he's a junior in high school and he is this size and thinking about uh, what does that project to later on. Jaden is going to keep growing. Jaden is going to get bigger. If you ask my estimation, Jaden could be the size of a linebacker at some point in his in his career because he just keeps growing, he keeps getting bigger, and keeps getting better. Now, would that work out for him well at wide receiver? Not particularly, but he does have good size or good speed for his size, so it's something that definitely could happen. Unfortunately for Jaden, he doesn't have a whole lot of offers right now. It's essentially Ohio State and Mac schools in Illinois that are interested in him. However, Brian Hartline sees something in Jaden Ricketts, especially with his speed and his size, and as we know, Brian Hartline seems to be going after some of these bigger wide receivers. We don't know exactly why just yet. We have our assumptions, possibly because of blocking, possibly because he likes the way uh, that, so, that these guys have their size and they're able to move. We'll see. But I expect Jaden Ricketts to continue to climb the board. I don't think that this will stand where he's the 15th rated player in Ohio. I think that's on 24-7 where he's there. It's not going to stand. He's going to get better. He's going to get noticed more. And there's going to be other schools that see him and go after him. Uh, he, he's been visiting Ohio State. He had a great visit. Uh, he's been going to multiple camps for Ohio State, been going to camps for a while now. And he's really built up a relationship with other guys who are committed or potentially going to commit and other guys in the state of Ohio. So this is a great guy that you want around the program as much as possible. He's very invested in Ohio State. And I think that he, he could be somebody that could commit soon if uh, if Ohio State wants to take that commitment he's a big body wide receiver like i said he's only going to get bigger excellent speed for his size uh, this the speed that he has is something you don't normally see in guys his size especially as young as he is and then he is super strong off the line of scrimmage he is able to fight just about any cornerback that's in front of him now a good portion of that is due to his size and what he's able to do uh, his size is something that you don't see uh, in high school all the time however it, he shows that he has good hands on the outside and he's also able to fight and get that separation almost immediately he is a fantastic weapon for his quarterback again like I said right now he's in the composite unranked I expect him only to be ranked higher and higher number two Jacob Weatherspoon, an athlete, 5'11", 172 pounds out of Avon High School in Avon, Ohio. Now, Ohio State is recruiting him primarily as a safety uh, it to be in the secondary. However, he is an athlete. Things could change. Uh, the Ohio State could decide to have him elsewhere. They could say, you know, bring him down if he gets bigger. But I don't think he will. I think he's going to stay a similar size to what he is now. Maybe put on some weight, but it doesn't look like he is going to grow in height substantially more. So uh, safety seems to be the spot that he's going to stay at. He is the number 186 player in the nation, the number 12 athlete, and the number 8 player in Ohio, according to the 24-7 composite. Right now, Ohio State is battling for him the most with Penn State and Notre Dame. Those seem to be the two schools. In fact, Notre Dame was even pushing some of their alumni uh, for from, from the program to really go speak to him, talk to him, because they are very, very interested in Jacob Witherspoon. He has been on multiple visits, game day visits to Ohio State, not just camps and stuff like that, but multiple visits on game day. He is the first non-commit to visit Ohio State twice this season. He's visited for the Marshall game, and I believe the Akron game was the other one. And uh, quite frankly, Matt Gruyere, he, he's just done a fantastic job 
with uh, with Jacob this entire time. He's been making a huge impact on him. He's been doing a great job with his relationship. And uh, not only that, but Tim Walton. We're going to just keep talking about Tim Walton because of how fantastic he is in recruiting. He He's like a father figure to, to Jacob is what he said in one of his interviews. And he actually said that's something that he's looking for and where he's going to commit. He wants a good, strong coach that he feels like is almost like a father figure to him, kind of like a second father uh, to, to him. He's a legit 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, guy. I mean, his speed, his speed also translates on the football field. You can tell that when he has the ball in his hands. Uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, we, whether he has the ball in his hands, out of his hands on the football field, he doesn't slow down. He plays with confidence. He's somebody that that uh, he, he believes in everything that he's doing. And so you see great speed with what he's doing out there. The combination of length and speed and athleticism is very impressive, and it's going to make him a tough matchup with anybody out there. In the run game, he, he he blitzes and he's fast and he's physical and like I said he's just he's confident in himself. Not only does he want to play tough, but he's also confident and will make every single play. I expect him to continue to climb in the rankings. I can't see Jacob Weatherspoon continuing to be uh, near 200. I think by the end of it, he's probably going to be closer to 100. Now I do think that most people are projecting him as a safety. And at least in the composite, that does hurt you a little bit just because everybody does, for the most part, project these things out for the NFL draft. And as we know, safeties don't typically get drafted as high as maybe cornerbacks and some other guys out there. So uh, that could impact him as well. But he is a very legit, I mean, he's a legit talent. He's somebody that if Matt Gurrier brings him in, it's going to be a fantastic ad for him. Number three, five star. Five-star Elbert Hill, the cornerback who is 5'10", 170 pounds, out of Archbishop Hoban and Akron. He is a composite, the number 18th player in the nation. Like I said, five-star, the number one cornerback and the number one player in the state of Ohio. Right now, uh, Ohio State is battling with Penn State. I believe that's who they're probably battling with the most here. He's been on multiple unofficial visits to Penn State. However, Alabama is also in on this one as well. Uh, Albert Hill, I believe, is planning on doing a visit to the Alabama-Georgia game, so that's supposed to be a huge one, and uh, we got to watch out for Alabama. Uh, Ohio State is going down to Alabama to get recruits, and Alabama is getting ready to retaliate and try to come up to Ohio. And get some guys. Uh, they went up and they got Justin Hill right now. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like Justin Hill is gonna flip anytime soon to Ohio State. So it looks like they're holding on to him pretty well. And uh, it, you know that's what Alabama. They're going to retaliate. That's what they're going to try to do. Uh, Illinois, Oregon, Tennessee. I mean, he has a lot more offers. He's a five-star recruit. Pretty much anybody that you know he wants to show interest in, they're probably going to offer him a scholarship at this point. Uh, just overall, I can't say enough good things about Tim Walton and what he's doing. I mean, the relationship there is just great. He said that he and Tim Walton speak almost every single day. Uh, he's somebody that is very... Um, is very on top of it and, and trying to recruit him as hard as he possibly can. Uh, the competitiveness of the cornerback room was mentioned to Albert Hill. And as we know, there was a cornerback this year in Dorian Brew that it seemed like one of the reasons why he didn't come was because of the competitiveness of the cornerback room. And uh, Albert Hill, he put that to bed right away. He said, "There, you know, no, it doesn't bother me that other guys are competitive, that other guys are good. He wants to learn from the older guys. He wants to get better and just try to make his way onto the field as quickly as he can. Uh, it, that goes right along with, uh, with how he plays, right? He's confident in what he does. He plays both ways in high school. He's an electric offensive player. Uh, but every single time I read a recap on one of his games before I watch the film of it, uh, he's saying, I mean, everybody's saying, well, it was kind of a boring game for Elbert Hill because guess what? Nobody throws his way. So almost all of his highlights are really on offense. There's really not all that much going on. Every now and then you have a quarterback trying to test him, but really it doesn't happen all that often because he has such good coverage skills and he's, he's sticky. He's one of those guys that if you put him on a guy, he's going to be stuck to him the entire time, the entire way out there. So just uh, just great stuff from Albert Hill. This is one of the best cornerbacks in the nation, if not the best cornerback in the nation. And uh, Tim Walton thing here it should be able to get things done. Uh, it's on a really good start so far. Next one is another cornerback in Victor Singleton, cornerback six foot, 160 pounds out of Central Catholic Toledo. Uh, this is Garen Duhart's alma mater. So there is a connection there with him. Now, Victor Singleton is not a five-star. However, he is the number 76, so a top 100 
uh, player in uh, the number 76. He is the top 100 player in the 24-7 composite, the number seven cornerback and the number three player in the state of Ohio. Right now, he is in his top 10, which he just released the other day, which is Michigan, Tennessee, Missouri, Ken- Kentucky, Wisconsin, Penn State, Texas A&M, Oregon, and Nebraska. Right now, Ohio State is definitely at the top. Most people are kind of consistent talking about that. The team right behind him, though, that seems to be giving them the most uh, issues is Oregon. So Oregon continuing to rear their ugly head in here with Ohio State recruiting. Doesn't look like they're going to go away anytime soon. It looks like they're going to try to go there uh, into Ohio in the Midwest and try to recruit these guys as much as they possibly can. So I think you're just going to continue to see Oregon uh, in a lot of these guys and what they do. He wants a program that he can trust, right? And that's hard to evaluate sometimes because what – you can trust means something different for almost everybody. But from what I've gathered, it sounds like he wants a program that he feels like he can call home and he feels like it's not going to do him wrong. Right. He, he doesn't want a bad experience that he's gonna have to transfer away from or anything like that. And really when you think about a program like that, there's no better program to think about that as other than Ohio state, right? If you give your all to Ohio state, Ohio state's going to give their all to you. And even if you don't give your all, Ohio state's still going to give their all to you. I mean, Ohio state is one of the best programs in the nation, if not the best. And, uh, in terms of making a t- players a priority and going after them, uh, at Ohio state, nobody does it better than them. Uh, Victor Singleton and Albert Hill are both close. I mean, this could be kind of another offered, uh, name offered Devin Sanchez kind of duo situation where the two are just so close, uh, and they seem to be really working together well. And, uh, you know, part of that is because they're both in Ohio. And so they're both Ohio guys and, uh, get to know each other, work together. And, uh, you, you have to think that that only makes the connection to Ohio state, that duo even stronger. All right. Our last guy. And I think you all are going to like this one. Offensive tackle. Maxwell Riley, six foot five, two hundred and eighty pounds, uh, out of Avon Lake High School in Avon Lake. He is the number seventy player nationally, the number nine offensive tackle, and the number two player in Ohio right now. Schools battling for him are he has a long offer list, but from everything we've seen, it looks like Alabama, Clemson, Florida State, Michigan State, Missouri, and Oklahoma seem to be the ones that we are battling the most with right now. Uh, Fry, look, Fry has struggled in recruiting, however. He uh, is making Riley a priority here. Uh, There's some talk about Sam Greer and Will Conroy, all that kind of stuff. Uh, There's no talk about Maxwell Riley because it's evident that Justin Fry really, really, really wants Maxwell Riley. And uh, we're going to get into some reasons for that here in a minute. But um, uh, Maxwell Riley, he just seems to be the offensive lineman in Ohio that Fry really wants the most. He seems to be the one that Fry feels the best connection with and feels like is the best uh, connection to the offense and uh, or the best fit for the offense and what they want to do. Uh, Maxwell Riley did mention that his priorities are faith, academics, and culture. Three things Ohio State excels in and you could argue is the best in the country. And academics, you know, sure, whatever. We got the Harvards and stuff like that in the Midwest, whatever. Uh, But Ohio State's uh, football players are always doing very well in their academics. Maxwell Roy is a very, very smart student. He's a 3.8 GPA right now. Very smart student, very smart kid, uh, really committed to his academics. And so uh, if he does decide to come to Ohio State, there's no doubt he will be able to continue continue his academic career very well there track and field shot put thrower he's won a number of competitions there Uh, one of the things that stands out with him is just great footwork he is uh, amazing with what he's been able to do building his footwork you go back and watch his freshman uh, year footage his footwork was okay um, but now it's it's getting better and better and it's really surprising because of how much weight he's put on over the years too sometimes you see these guys put on weight and their footwork gets a little sloppy and they have to learn how to play in their newer size you haven't really seen that from Maxwell Roy. Maxwell Roy started out his freshman year about 260 pounds. He grew to about 280 pounds a sophomore year, and now he's still listed at 280, but I think he's bigger than that. He looks like he's bigger than 280 in my mind, <clears throat> and it's just it's really cool to see, and uh, it's really fun to watch him block guys. One of the things, and this is the thing that I think is making him so attractive to Justin Fry is his high school has started running a lot more outside zone and he's the best one doing it. Even though he's the biggest guy out there, he is the best one at running outside zone on this team and, uh, and blocking for him. So he, the kid has great athleticism. He's getting downfield. He's attacking those guys and he's blocking them. 
excessively. So you love to see it, and I have to think that Justin Fry loves to see that, and it's one of the reasons why he is so strongly going after Maxwell Riley. All right, everybody, those are my five guys from Ohio that are showing major interest in Ohio State, and Ohio State is reciprocating the interest back to them. Let me know if you feel good about any of these guys you think they're coming. Uh, Bill Curlick sound, feels really good about them. All these guys have crystal balls in from Bill Curlick, so uh, so take that for, for what it's worth. Bill is uh, one of those guys that doesn't really put out crystal balls unless he actually feels really good about it he's not as a uh, uh, cavalier with his crystal ball selection so whenever i see that crystal ball from bill curlick it always makes me feel a little bit better as i'm sure it makes you guys feel a little bit better too let me know your thoughts on these guys come check me out over on the big 10 huddle as well and check us out on the post game shows we'll have a post game after michigan state this week come check us out and hang out with us even if you don't check us out live uh come listen later on i think me and mike do a good job and i think everybody would enjoy it. Thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good one.